this part, we'll tackle the funnels. Now these were enjoyable, with some plastic work to do uh, and a lot of photo etch and brass work. We also had some uh, detailed soldering with the steam pipes, the platform, funnel caps. The aft one's a bit simpler. So let's make a start. So for the two funnels, I'm just going to show you making the four one because that's the most involved. The aft one's identical, just a bit simpler with the amount of attachments that will be on it. Okay, so I'll just clean up these sprue gates. Okay, so that's how cleaned up. I'm going to travel fit now. So on the vents, there is some uh, locating tabs. So that looks not too bad. However, a couple of things I've noticed is we've got injection pins marks around the top here. So we'll see if we just try to remove them because. So, the majority of the extra parts we are they're going to be Pontus. However, for these vents, we're actually going to replace them with uh, KA models. So we actually have top and bottom plates, plus the vents themselves. I'll clean these up in a second. I just want to show you. I'll show you the, the brass turned work on these. So on the top one, they actually sit underneath, poke through like that. And then on the bottom, you can see there's like an, an etched recess and it fits perfectly in that. I'll finish cutting out and cleaning these up and then we'll come back and have a look at uh, assembling these. So to help me place the vents into the Cap. I've got some plastic card and I've just cut a hole enough to let them all through because when I did a dry run it was really frustrating trying to get them in position without disturbing the ones that are already installed. So the tan brass parts themselves are quite weighty so once they're in they kind of sit nicely by their own. So I'm just going to lock them in position or hopefully lock them in position with some super glue thing. Okay, so that's them glued on. Let's try the, the bottom cup, making sure we get the recess down the way. Now, with it being shiny brass to shiny brass, I'm just wondering just how, how robust uh, the super glue pond's going to be. Okay, so it's okay on the, the top. It's actually got a bit of weight to it. I'm just concerned about the the bond. I'm just wondering if I should uh, fill the gap in between with like baking powder, or baking soda and make a bit of a cement. Alternatively, I could maybe fill in the inside with epoxy. Or maybe I should do that in the top once I lock this plate on. I'll have a think. I don't really need to worry about glue overflow because now this is a back side, you won't see this ever. Okay, let's see how it fits into the funnel. So, I've got to remember there's no locating tabs now, so if we make this center line here with the front and back edge, that will be the position of it. 
So as you can see, because of this weight that sinks down, when we come time to glue, we need to make sure it's held up against the underside of the lip. Okay, so it's a bit of a comparison. I'll just double check. I just had a look at the plans and the case sits a lot higher. The key instructions so show it's sitting a lot higher, which may be a problem with the funnel cap. As the pointer's funnel cap sits in that recess there. Very nicely actually. So with that vent sitting there as well. Okay, that's okay, there's enough room for both. I was a bit worried that the, the vents was taking up the space where the funnel cap would sit on, but that's uh, there's plenty of room in there. Just before I progress, I'm gonna have a think the best way to strengthen these up before I go ahead and glue the, the funnel together. So for the second one, as an alternative, I'm just trying to solder them up. So far, it's not too bad. I've got the first four on. And I'm just using the solder paste. I'm just trying to work alternate sides and that, but just to keep the temperature down. So what I'm also doing is that plate in position, just so that it's all in line. I'm just pressing down. I'm actually applying the heat to the barrel or to the vent itself, not the plate. Getting very warm after doing several of them. So it's certainly an alternative. And as you can see, it'll clean up nicely. So with this all soldered up, there is another benefit because they're so secure. And they aren't gonna come away with a weak super glue bond. You don't actually need this bottom plate anymore. So what you could do is continue on with the funnels, cleaning them up and whatnot, and then you can drop that in later. Can be handy, I guess, because you can now work on cleaning up all these edges without worrying about the brass being in the way. Just for consistency, I'll glue it on anyway. I still haven't done anything with this one. So I ended up filling in the spaces of the back side with uh, bicarbonate soda and super glue. So of course that's went off very hard and hopefully it's uh, gripping everything. So it's now time to glue the halves together. And I'm just going to place these in for the time being. I'm not actually going to glue them at this stage. And I'm just going to use Revels contactor. I'm just holding it flat in the bottom to make sure both the heights the same on both sides. And I want the top ring to be uh, in line because it will be easier to clean up the, the outside than it would be to clean up the ring itself because it's so small. Now we're getting a bit of uh, overflow but that's okay because we need to remove all this uh, molded detail anyway. Okay, so with the glue set up, we can now see about treating the seams prior to cleaning off the detail. Now I'm going to go through the full seam with a uh, sprue glue because I don't want to risk any seams coming back through the paint. So there's a couple of areas we need to concentrate. You know, it's particularly at the ends of joints where the plastic is shrunk in the mold. They're always at the ends, particularly the thicker ends here. So we just want to build that up. We can see there's actually some gaps down this seam here so some of it's joined very well 
get some of it still got a bit of a gap. So we want to make sure that doesn't reappear. Then we've also got some holes where the steam pipes were going to go. So to fix that, we'll just put some glue and use some stretch sprue to fill the hole. Okay. So I'll just keep working my way through these and then we'll come back and have a look. So it's been sitting about 24 hours since I put in the sprue glue. So now we can just start tidying it up. Of course, there's other detail to come off as well. So to remove the sprue glue, I actually like to use a nice new sharp blade and just scrape it down. And I can take a bulk. Now I'll take the bulk of the sprue glue down to, to the level. So just take your time. Because you don't want to overdo it because then you just have to go back in and refill. We've also got these molded on ribs. Again, you can just scrape them down. You have to be a bit more careful. You don't want to dig in. So with all the flat scraping done, I'm going to remove the molded on ridges just with a curved blade. You don't want to overdo this because you don't want to scrape in like grooves or gouges. So just scrape enough to remove the high points. And you can actually still see a bit of a, hopefully you can see a, still a bit of a shadow. If you get rid of the shadow, you've probably potentially went a bit too deep. And that might show up in the paint as being grooves. So again, just take it easy. With all the scraping done, we'll go into the sanding now. And I'm going to use a rigid sander just to re-establish some of these sharp edges. Now I'm only using 1200. So that's just to reduce the, the likelihood of putting flat spots in. And because the paper is only glued up to the edge, you've got a safe edge here. So we can now start forming these curves. Without fear of digging into the bottom. And of course it will work on the other side as well, going up to that edge. And being 1200, it would take a bit of effort to, to really mess up. And then we can come to the this outside edge here and just take off a high spot that the, the sprue glue created. there and just re-establish that line. Just scrape that last little internal edge as best you can. You can get some folded paper in there. So on to the other side. But we do the bottom now. Okay, yeah, so that's the kind of how we go about doing the edges. And we've got a little platform here, or a rib, which is for the platform. It can be too wide to get in. We can still just hold it at an angle to keep it off that edge. Okay, so that's how to establish their sharp edges and corners, or how I do it anyway. So we can go into the soft sanders now, and that's the form around the, the curves. So I'll use this blue one first. It's quite aggressive, I think. But of course, you can apply 
as much as flash pressure as you need. Now, if you find any dents or depressions, try and avoid trying to sand them out because then you will put in shapes. What I do is prime it and then we can come back and just touch them up with some surface 500 or similar. I haven't used this side before, let's give this a try. I might just go around the whole circumference. Okay, this one's quite aggressive, I'm not a fan of that one. Okay, so with the blue coarse one done, we'll move on to the, the finer one. Okay, so just going to the finish now. Now you could go straight into the 1200 by hand. I'll just have a look at the 600 first. And I'm going to use water as well. And we'll just keep working our way down. And then we'll finish off with the 1200. So again, be methodical, we'll just start at one point and work our way around. And again, I'm using water. Okay, so that's all the cleanup done at this stage anyway. Until I get some primer on, I will know if anything else needs addressing. And then we can fix anything that shows up. So we need to attach the foot which breaks into the front of my arm. We'll just cut it free from the fret. That was very flimsy. Now we're going to have to be super careful handling this because the slightest knock is just going to twist and bend. The other dilemma I have is do I anneal it? Because remember it has to be wrapped around the funnel. I mean it looks so thin that it shouldn't be a problem to wrap it. What I will do is I'll just put some tape on to mark the edge of the seam. So we'll see where that is. So the center of this should be on the edge of the tape. I think I am going to anneal it just to try and take a spring out of it. Now I'm going to have to be super careful because it won't take much to totally destroy this part. I think. Hopefully I didn't overdo it. Couldn't get this centre a bit, but hopefully it's okay. Just try and keep everything from moving about. Now. I'm sure I'm making this harder than it really is. Okay, let's see if we can get some glue onto this. So I've got some super glue on this. I'll just attach some bits of tape to stop the, the bond breaking when I come to move the... Now I wonder if I can just uh, roll this. Possibly not. Okay, but I should be able to tape. Okay, so... Change the tactic. What I'll do is, I think I'll just keep moving the center. 
keeping the keeping it aligned with the bottom because that bottom edge is like a really good reference. Okay, so I keep the pressure on. So now it's really just held down the center strip uh, with tape. And of course, we've got the glued, initial glued edge. So what I'm thinking now is we're actually able to glue up these ones. And then if we push it forward, it should go flat. And we can do that. So we'll try that then. Okay, so you get the idea. I'll just go around the tops first and then we'll come back. So with the top sections all glued up, we'll now work along the uh, the lower halves. But it's just the same process. Okay, so we'll just keep doing that. Okay, I'll just keep working around. Okay, and we'll start removing all these bits of tape. I'll leave this one here, that was the very first one. And of course that was the end one as well. Come back to that, because I think there might be problems with the ends. Okay, so that's a very stripped except these end joins. Now, they were very springy. Bent that one, it's okay, I'll be easy fix. Okay, it's not too bad. Still, you can start to see it lift away. Okay, that one's not too bad. Same with this bottom one. Okay, so on the whole, it's not too bad in general. I've just really messed up the ends because even though I nailed them, these last bits were very springy. This one shouldn't be too bad to fix. Okay, finally managed to get that. I think it's safe to say I'm gonna find this moment. It's on anyway. So with the bracing on, we can now fit the funnel onto the funnel base. And we'll use the rebel contact again. Now I'm just going to put around the inner edge. Because I don't want it really overflowing to the outside. Now there's a little locating peg. Okay, there was a bit of free play back and forth, so I can then just make sure the, the center hole lines up with the brace and same with the back. So let's work on the platform now. So we'll have to fold this in half. And then I'll solder it. And that's went together really well. So we'll solder up the platform now. So we just apply flux just to the edge again. Now I want to try something different. I want to put the solder paste just along the edge. 
normally when I do this, this type of wedge soldering and I pick up the solder on the soldering iron and apply it to the edge. I want to see if I can do this this way instead. Hopefully it's a way to minimize cleanup. Oh, it looks really good. I've got zero overflow to the sides. So I've got a bare minimum of film went over the sides. But the edges, so they're well, I'm assuming it's all they haven't let go yet. Okay, so that looks like it's worked really well. I'll do this side now. I won't do the center until this is done and then I can clean off the, the edge. It's left where the fold is. It's two little spurs there. So I'll just uh, file off. You can just make them up the two fold lines. I'll just use an arrow or a peg. And then I'll just do the black edge as well, as well. Okay, so that was so clean. I'll probably get away without any cleanup. Although I will just give the top a rub. I'm just a wee bit on some 1200. edges are really nice. Okay, so there is, hopefully you can see, there's a couple of braces that go in here, but I'm not going to do that just yet, because I want to see how it fits up to the, the funnel itself. So for the platform, we'll do the hand drills next. Now, these are handed, and I don't know if you can see, there's etched marks here for bending which would correspond to the bends there. But we need to put a, a roll into it first. Hold it up to the side. So that post there lines up with the tangent. So that's where we need to start rolling. So I've just got a bit of foam here. And this is a three mil drill, which is almost a correct diameter for that. Okay, so I do need to actually take a roll back a bit. Okay, so what I think I can do is do the same thing and roll it forward this way a bit as well. Okay, it's not too bad. Still needs to come tighter. I've got a three and a half mil drill, which I'm going to just press in to open it a wee bit. And then come in with a three. It's actually looking not too bad. We'll put the hard bend in now. The instructions say 90 degrees, but it's nowhere near 90. Oh, almost got it spot on first time. Oh, 
get some tooth bar. I need to tighten the, the curve, which will bring this over this way a wee bit. And then I just need to tweak out two corners. But that's looking very good there, very close almost. And I managed not to put a twist into it, because as you can see, the bottom rail is flat all the way around on the block. So there's no twist in it, which is good. Okay, so I'll just tidy this up a wee bit. And of course, the, the other side's exactly the same, so I won't show that. I just need to tighten this corner, uh, this bend here. It's going to come down to two and a half. Okay. Okay, so that's both handrails bent up. This was just a mirror on that side, not too bad. I did put a little bend on the ends here, just because they wrap around this curve a wee bit. It's not a nice smooth curve, it's, it's a bit sharp. Okay, let's see what's holding these handrails onto the platform. So, I'm just gonna tack a few points doesn't need much I'll see if I can just touch the, the platform without disturbing the handrail Okay, so yep, that's one nice. Let's put a couple of little dots. Okay, so I'm kind of secured all the way around here. Now I just need to pull this section back. Don't want to mess about too much because then that's when things start getting all bent out of shape. Okay, so we'll do the other side. Not too bad. Very happy with that. Okay, so we can now attach the platform to the funnel itself. Now for that, I'm just going to use crystal clear. At least initially, anyway. Made up a little, a little square. Because there's also these steam pipes to go in as well. I think these are for the, the ship's horns. Okay, so we'll feed this pipe up through the hole and then line it into the base there. And then we'll do the same for the other side. See? 
just need to twist it around to make it vertical. Okay, that's okay. Now we just use some super glue thin to lock the pipe to the... Uh, and I'll just put a bead along here as well. Okay, it's looking quite good. Now the platform also has a couple of horns and then Ponta supply the resin and then you've got the, the kit part. And to be honest, the kit part looks quite good. I might clean them both up and we'll see what one we use. Has the beginnings of an opening, so we might just drill them out. We'll just drill that out as well. Okay, so that's the ship's horns kind of prepared and drilled out. Still not sure of what one I like better. Okay, I'm going to go with the kit part. It's just got a bit more presence, I think. So I have to try and get the And then once it starts to harden again, just fine tune it. Well, just put, uh, just work at the end a wee bit, just to get it molten. So well, let's have a look at the steam pipes next. So they're quite a nice turned brass part. And each of these, I've got three brackets on each one because they're full wedge again. And they're a single part fold with two folds in them. So we'll have a look at that now. Okay, so here's the bracket. I took a lot of time cutting the, the frets with the joining tabs so I didn't do any clean up. So hopefully you can see the fold there, the fold line. So we'll make it to 90 degrees. So we need 15 of them. I've done the other ones already. And there's three. And there is actual locating grooves for them. Okay, so we'll solder the brackets onto the steam pipes now. So the first one's going to be relatively easy. Because we don't need to line it up with anything. Straightening up. Okay, so that's the first one on. Now the other ones are going to be tricky because we all need to mark them in the same line. So what I think I'll do is I'll do the, the other end. The base holding it in position. So, so we'll just tape down the front end which will hold it flat. You can just push that one into alignment. So hopefully you can see the top one's hard against the, the block and the bottom one's against the block as well. So we know they're in line. Apply the heat. Now all going well. Okay, so that's now in place as well. And both of them are touching the deck uh, flat. 
So we can now do the center one. When you have this middle one, we'll apply the heat. So hopefully you can see that they're all in line and all three brackets are flat against the surface. So I'll go ahead and do the other four. One of them, I'm only going to do the top and middle because it does need to feed through the platform. Which I won't be able to do if I put all three on. So I'll just do the top and middle. Okay. Okay, so we'll fit the steam pipes next. We'll start off with the back one, that's the simplest one. Okay, so we'll just put a bit of tape on first. And then what we'll do is we'll just put a square next to it and just eyeball it. Okay, so we're just looking for a straight line, an even gap. Pretty good there. So I'm just putting a piece of tape at the edge of the, the bracket, the same on the other side. I have to be careful with the And we'll just get some thin super glue to work it down into the socket to lock out there. So we'll be able to take this tape off now. And then we'll just uh, glue the top bracket now. So we'll just pull that away slightly. Put some glue onto it. And it's sprung right back into its proper position, which is good. Okay. That's that one. And then we'll just touch some super glue onto the other. Okay. Okay, so we'll do the, the front one. Okay, so we need to feed it down through the hole in the platform. And get it into the hole in the base plate. So can go down and same again. We'll just eyeball it up again. We'll just lock the bottom socket in. What I'll do as well, I'll actually lock it to the platform. Now, I don't want to try and pull this up, so I'm just going to glue it from behind. The same with the mid. So the last thing to do is get that bottom bracket in, which I think is going to be a pin, but we'll see what we got. I'm almost of the opinion you could leave it off. Okay, it's in. One of the legs is flattened, but uh, I think it's just too bad. I'm just going to lock it in at that. No. Okay. Okay, so let's assemble the funnel caps now. now as you probably guessed, I'm going to try soldering these up. So that's up and secure. Just need to make sure it's in a notch. Okay, we'll set up for the next side.
So I'm not going to solder the center just yet. Uh, I'll wait until all the other ones are in. We just may, need to make sure it's in the center. And again, just double check it's in the notch. Pretty good. So the next piece needs to be folded in half. Ah, sorry, folded at 90 degrees, and that will form the next two. Okay, that's in at the top there, nice. Now, again, we want to make sure it's in the notch. So I'm just going to hold it down in the center. And again, just want to get it into the notch. Looking really good. I'm happy with this. Just have to be very careful. It's looking so good. And then when I set it up, I'm bashed against the camera. Tiniest bend in it or twist. But hopefully, it should come good once we get the other bits on. So it's now time to solder the center. So remember, we've got all these meeting in the middle now. I want to press them and make sure they're all flush on the top side. And they are, looks good. So the last piece to put on is the underside ring. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just do one side at a time, then I'll be able to push and pull it into position. Not sure how much of that is, so we can now get the opposite side done. These two here, I wouldn't even need to hold them. They're staying in position as it is, which is good.
It's actually quite good. So they're almost sitting in position without having to push or pull or Okay, I'm very happy with that. Turned out well. I wish I could say it was pretty good for my first attempt, but I actually practiced on the other one, which is kind of okay. Some twists and bends in it, and it took like three times longer than this one did. Second one's good. I like that. Okay, the last thing to do is to fit the funnel cap. We just need to secure the vents first, so we need to make sure we straighten them up, because remember, we didn't actually glue them when we made the funnel. So we'll just apply some thin super glue. And now the funnel cap. And again, just need to make sure it's lined up. See if we can whip some glue in again. Okay, so we're all ready for priming paint. So with the funnels all primed and the great colour coats put on, it's now time to do the the black uh, topping. Now it asks for just black. In my opinion, this strip black is just far too dark, and certainly at this scale. So the other alternatives are that I have in hand is NATO black and rubber black. Now I think in this case the NATO black's maybe just a bit too light and then you've got the rubber black which is kind of sits in between the three. Now you probably can't make out the differences on camera but I think I'm going to go with the, the rubber black and it'll be a, a more scale colour I think. Okay so we'll get masked up and then we'll get these sprayed up. So that's the funnels finished. I've just placed them temporarily in place. I'm not going to put them down permanent because there's still supports between the funnel bases and the boat deck for the ship's boats to go on. Just for access, I'll leave the funnels off for the time being. I've also not shown the ladder. It goes from the platform down to the funnel base. Because again, I can't install that until the funnels are permanently fixed. But yeah, they turned out not too bad. I'm quite happy with that.